What's up, you guys? It's Simon. In the last videos, we started talking about variables. Like I said, there's still a lot of different variable types to go after and talk about. Um, but that video should have provided a pretty solid understanding of the concept behind them that will make learning other variables in the future a little bit easier. We will have to learn about another variable in this section. And the reason we will is because we're going to talk about a new concept entirely called if statements. So if statements are pretty much the only way in Apex that we can make decisions and perform different actions based off those decisions. And the way we do that is with the syntax if followed by parentheses and these funny squiggly brackets that define the scope. And within these brackets, we can define our action. So the action is going to be different lines of Apex code that we take. And within these parentheses, we never leave them blank. This is where we actually define our condition. So whatever condition we have in here, we will perform an action, as long as that condition is true. If this condition will evaluate it to false, we would never, ever execute this line of code. And that's not something that we control. That is something that Apex handles for us. So if this condition is false, there will never, ever be a situation where this line of code is executed. OK, so how and what can we put in our conditions? So let's start off with something really simple like saying is the number three equal to the number five. And if it is, let's put a debug statement saying these numbers are the same. So unfortunately, this won't actually execute because if you remember from the last video, the equal sign is the assignment operand. So this is assigning three to five, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And I promise you Apex will tell you the same thing and tell you how much big dummy energy you've brought to the session. Instead, what we need to do is use a double equal sign. The double equal sign is no longer an assignment operator, it's a comparison operator. So as soon as you put two equal signs, this tells Apex you want to compare these two values. So now it says if 3 is equal to 5. Not 3 is 5, but 3 is equal to 5. So if this is true, which I really hope isn't, it will print out this piece of code. Otherwise, if it's false, it's going to skip over that piece of code, which means we'll never see the system debug. So let's see if I'm lying or not. All right, and hit debug. No debug statements, just like I promised. So if I had changed the logic here, though, and said, is 5 equal to 5, I would hope that's true. So let's execute the highlighted piece of code and see if we get our debug statement now. Very cool, these numbers are the same. Okay, so how can we leverage variables to do the same thing? Well, just like how we create an integer, we could set an integer called x is equal to five, and we could replace one of these with the new variable that we created. And if we execute that, we should see our debug statement, which we do, everything's looking great. So we aren't limited to just this though, because what's going on behind the scenes with this equal equal operand is that apex behind the scenes returns a value of true or false. Alternatively, we could create our own values of true or false using the variable type boolean. So a boolean has a limited set of values that can be set to it. So if I had a boolean called it my boolean and set it equal to five and I tried to execute that piece of code, a legal assignment. You can't assign an integer to a boolean. And if I try to set it equal to a string, same thing. Can't convert a string to a Boolean. And the reason that is is because a Boolean can only have two values, true or false. So if I have this Boolean be equal to true, I could just reference that directly in here instead of the condition. If my Boolean is true, then do the system debug. So even in this situation, I would expect to see that piece of code execute. And of course, I didn't highlight that. Sweet. So it seems like it's working as expected. OK, so what if, what if I wanted to print out a debug statement if this was false? The way we could do that is one of two things. First is, well, I guess I'll, for now, I'll just mention one. You can follow an if condition with an else condition. So what the else says is, if this was not true, then I want you to execute these other pieces of code. So for this one, keeping it simple, these numbers are not the same. 
So now we've covered every situation. It's either going to be the same or they're not going to be the same. This doesn't really make a whole lot of sense anymore because we got rid of the condition in here. So let's change it back to that. And we would expect to see that one, which we've already seen. So let's update it to something that would cause this to be would cause this to be false, which means this would not print out. And instead, this else will. And that'll print out this piece of code. Let's see if that happens. Cool. These numbers are not the same. One other thing that we can do is squeeze in between if and else. Another piece of code called the else if. OK, so following all the lines of code that we have so far, I have a variable called x of type integer set to 5. Line 3 will be the first piece of code that executes after that. And it's going to see if x is equal to 6. Well, we know that x is 5, so this would evaluate to false, which means we'll never see this line of code in our debug console. So since that was false, it'll now jump directly down to line 6. In line 6, it does a similar comparison, seeing if the variable held within x is equal to 7. Again, that's false, so we'll never see line 7 execute. Since that was false, it jumps down to the last condition, which is the else. In the else, there is no condition to check for. So that would mean if everything before it was false, that's the only way we can actually hit line 9. And at that point, it'll print out that the variable is not 6 or 7, which we know is true, because otherwise it would have never even come to this else. Alternatively, if x was really set to 7, just to run through what would happen, again, this would still be false, which means that we would never evaluate this line of code. So that would jump directly from line 3 down to line 6. In line 6, it would see if x is equal to 7, which it is. So it does now jump to line 7, prints out line 7. And once that's done, it hits line 8 and realizes there's nothing else to do after that. So it directly skips lines 9, 10, and 11 and jumps down and executes any other piece of code that's left. So we have some options there. The last thing I wanted to talk about with if statements is the operand called the not operand. But what the not operand does is that it flips the condition. It flips the Boolean value of a condition that you write. So let's go back to using a true Boolean value. So Boolean my bool. And I want to set that to true. Okay. And if I had a if statement here about my bool, system.debug. OK. So OK, so we covered this in the last one, right? If this is true, print out this. And we know my Boolean is true. So of course, it'll print out line 17. But what we could do is use the exclamation point. And what the exclamation point tells Salesforce through Apex is that do the opposite of this. So it first goes and finds out what the value of my bool is. And it knows my bool is true. But this not operand, it flips that Boolean value. So it turns true to false, and it turns false to true. So now, believe it or not, because of this exclamation point, Line 17 will never get printed out because my Boolean is true, but this is flipping it to say not true. So if it's not true, which means if it's false, and ultimately if it's false, don't execute line 17. Of course, if I flip this the other way around and set my bool to false, now this condition is not false, which means it's true. Whereas before, it was not true. It was false. So that does get a little tricky and does kind of require some practice. But once you get the hang of it after a couple different examples, um, you'll get through it in no trouble. So that is it for this video. We will go through more examples and more complicated if statements um, as we go throughout the series. But that's it for now. In the next section, we'll talk about the different loops we have available to us in Apex.